Welcome to episode 5 of Out of the Blue. Like I promised last week, today we're going to be talking about some of the more complicated issues having to do with black holes. Now, if you haven't seen last week's video with the introduction to black holes, then I do recommend that you go watch it before watching this video, because I'm going to be talking about some really complex things that might be difficult to understand already, so it helps having that base. Um, we're going to be talking about the central singularity issue and Hawking radiation today. And there's a lot of, of other stuff that I could talk about having to do with black holes, but I'm going to stick to those two things because they're already hard enough to explain, and I don't need to just throw everything that I can at you. So if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's get started. First off is the central singularity issue. And this is the issue that arose when people did calculations to figure out the distribution of mass inside of a black hole. You'll remember that a black hole is just extremely high gravity, so it's just an extreme curvature of space-time. So usually, using the equations involved in general relativity, people figured out that to have such a high curvature, you need a single point at the center of a black hole with all of its mass. That means a central singularity, that's what it's called. That means a single point with zero volume and infinite density. Now, that doesn't work out in our natural world because we try to avoid infinities and we try to avoid zeros because they don't mathematically make sense. And everything in science kind of tells us that it doesn't work out, but that's our best guess right now. And either we need a new model or we need a way to reconcile our current models with this central singularity because quantum mechan um, sorry, that sounded weird. Quantum mechanics breaks down inside of a black hole. General relativity breaks down. Space-time doesn't exist, period, at the central singularity. Space and time don't exist at all. And nothing works. And we don't quite know why, and really, if we have a model that encompasses all of the universe, it shouldn't break down at an event horizon. So we need people like you to figure out why it does that, and to figure out a way to fix that little issue. Now for one of the coolest things I've learned in astronomy so far, and that is Hawking radiation, which is basically the evaporation of black holes. Now I'm going to use the Heisenberg uncertainty principle to explain this, so I'm going to start talking about that. Now the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, if you're familiar with it, you probably know that the more we know the momentum of a quantum particle, the less we know its position, and the more we know its position, the less we know its momentum. Well, the general uncertainty principle extends that to time and energy. So the more we know time, the less we know energy, and the more we know energy, the less we know time. Now that means in a really, really short amount of time, like a Planck time, which is the shortest amount of time that you can have ever by definition, the uncertainty in energy is super high. Now, this uncertainty in energy in this tiny amount of time is high enough that there can actually be a pair created, a pair of particles, a pair of a particle and an antiparticle are created out of thin air with a random velocity somewhere. And these particles and antiparticles, because they're particles and antiparticles, they meet and they annihilate and they go away. So we don't really notice this effect. But it's really important when dealing with black holes because it does explain how they evaporate. So let's here we have a black hole. This here is the event horizon, and somewhere back there is a the central singularity that we talked about before. Now, because time still exists around a black hole, you still have these particles that pop up out of nowhere. So let's say one is created right there, and the other one is over here somewhere. And this one happens to have a random velocity that means it's shooting up away from the black hole. Well, because the black hole is so gravitationally strong, it tries to pull this one into itself, because that's what gravity does. It pulls matter into itself. Well, because this one is so attracted to this one, it takes a lot of energy to actually separate these two to get this in here. Well, the black hole doesn't really... it doesn't... It's not prejudiced or anything, so it uses that energy to get this particle into itself. The particle does enter the black hole, but because the only energy a black hole has is gravitational potential energy, the only way it can expel energy is by losing mass, and that's what it does. It expels mass in order to get this teeny tiny particle into itself, and that's how black holes evaporate. Now, this happens at a tiny tiny scales. So the black hole at the center of our Milky Way, we probably can't notice this happening. But if we were to say make a black hole at the Large Hadron Collider, 
it would probably evaporate really quickly, we hope. That is, if this works. Um, we don't really have a way of proving it because we can't do experiments on black holes, but it is a really good theory, and there are experiments proving the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. So it works out, and that's how a black hole gets smaller over time. Those are really exciting things. I don't know if you're excited. I'm super excited. Maybe that's just because I'm a nerd. But these are really awesome things that you should be excited about, too. You should be happier having learned about the central singularity issue and Hawking radiation and the Heisenberg uncertainty principle because they're so cool! And I, for one, think the central singularity issue is kind of inspirational because we know next to nothing about what happens inside of a black hole and one of us is gonna have to figure that out. Our generation has to find that out. And I say that because I really want to know before I die. So you guys have to help me figure it out or I have to figure it out. One of us has to figure it out and I think we should be excited about that. So I'll see you guys next week. Thank you for learning with me. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching all of my videos. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Goodbye.